So we're about one month away from the release of Crisis Core Reunion, and I think this game will be pretty good. If you guys didn't know, I'm not the biggest fan of Crisis Core to begin with, but, and I really want to emphasize this, I think the remaster slash remake has the potential to be something that, that exceeds expectations of everyone. My reason for not liking Crisis Core mainly has to do with the gameplay mechanics. I'm a turn-based guy, so going into Crisis Core, this isn't exactly my cup of tea. In this video, however, I'm going to be focusing on the story of Crisis Core Reunion and how it sets up for the rest of the Final Fantasy VII Remake trilogy. The fact that Final Fantasy VII is already set up as not necessarily a remake and more of a sequel. That's pretty much evidence towards that. I've been talking to my friends about a theory I have about Final Fantasy 7 Remake and I think you guys might like it. If you're a Final Fantasy fan, subscribe. I got more content on the way and shout out to all my Final Fantasy 8 fans. Now that that's settled, let's get into it. So this video is obviously going to have spoilers for Final Fantasy 7 Remake. If you guys haven't played that yet, go play it like now. Again, spoiler warning, if you haven't beat FF7 Remake, go play it. The question I think every Final Fantasy fan is wondering is, will the ending be different this time, and will Zack live at the end of the game? So at the end of Final Fantasy VII Remake, there's a flashback-like sequence that shows Zack carrying Cloud after they get out of Shinra custody. After Zack battles Shinra soldiers, we've all seen this like a million times, however, this time it's a little bit different. He says the legendary line, the price of freedom is steep, and this time there are whispers flying all around the battlefield. I'm not exactly too sure if Zack can see this, or maybe it's just something for the audience. I really honestly have no clue how Zack beats an entire platoon of Shinra soldiers, but whatever. The screen cuts to the battlefield and shows all the dead soldiers with Zack still standing. We see Stamp, the Beagle, which represents something kinda supernatural, I think. We'll probably understand what this means further in the next game. Zack looks off into the distance and sees Midgar covered in a light which I believe either has to do with the final battle or just the Arbiters of Fate themselves. Remember at the end of Final Fantasy VII Remake, the party fights the plot ghost which opens up a bunch of multiple timeline bullshit in the first place. Basically, fate can be changed now. The sky definitely seems to be a common theme in this game moving forward and I guess we'll have to wait and see because I think Aerith mentions this in the uh, same cutscene. Or maybe not the same cutscene but in the same game. After the Intergrave DLC, Zack makes his way back to the church in the slums and practices his hellos to Aerith. I have two theories on this. This either takes place after the events from when we last see Zack, meaning he actually makes his way back to the slums from the Nibelheim mansion that he escapes from. That basically happened at the end of Crisis Core, so, you know, obviously playing the remake, they'll kind of go into this and you'll see them escaping after they fight Sephiroth and all that. So I either think this happens, or maybe Zack is sent to a time after Aerith is dead, and what he walked into in the slums was actually the morning for the flower girl. I think it's more likely that Aerith isn't dead yet and Zack just walks into a Midgar a bit after the main cast leave when they went to call him. And that's pretty much what we know about Zack so far in the Final Fantasy VII Remake timeline. In an interview with creative director Tatsuya Nomura, when asked about the titling, he said, We had mixed feelings on this as we weren't sure about the best way to, to describe the project. At one point, there was also a discussion about calling it a remake or remaster. I think the product is more close to the definition of a remaster. As the story wasn't changed at all, and it's always the same game. I'ma be real with y'all, I think this motherfucker lying his ass off. Like, of course it's gonna have a different ending after the events of FF7 Remake make. It just doesn't make sense for it to be a one-to-one -one exact, you know, copy of Crisis Core. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I'm actually convinced we're gonna get a similar ending to Final Fantasy VII Remake. And if I remember correctly, I believe they were saying the same thing when FF7 Remake was coming out. I feel like they said it's uh, the same story, but then obviously the game came out and it has a different fucking story. So I guess we have to just wait and see. So we, basically, we're not entirely too sure until the game comes out but these are just my theories and that's it for me today you guys make sure you guys like and comment what do you guys think do you guys think zach is gonna live at the end of crisis core and let's talk about it i'll see you guys later peace